head coach can get his 100th win tonight. 19 years. He's an assistant for Gene Cady at Western Kentucky and Purdue. He has done a phenomenal job here in Carbondale. And again, last year's Sweet 16 run answered the question, what is a Saluki? And on the other side, a National Coach of the Year candidate. Dana Altman, one of 30 candidates for the Naismith National Coach of the Year. 95 wins in four years. You do the math. And look at this quote from Mike Bray of Notre Dame. He said, I think it's a complete insult to refer to Creighton as a mid-major program. They play to their strengths and know their roles. Bray knows he lost to Dana Altman and Creighton back in November in Kansas City. Altman has been back-to-back -back coach of the year in the league. That's only been done one other time in the last 30 years. That was Tubby Smith when he was at Tulsa. And now is the head coach at Kentucky. Let's check in now our Chrysler keys to the game, Scott. Well, Mitch, both teams brought to you by our Chrysler Jeep dealers. Well, Mitch Creighton needs a best supporting actor. You know what you're going to get from Corver every night out, but the Blue, G Blue Jays need a second score to emerge and take the pressure off Corver. They need countermeasures. Both these teams know each other so well, there will be very few surprises. Southern will try to take away the good looks for Corver. Can Creighton find ways to get him shot? And now Southern Illinois wants to have the focus of a fighter pilot. What do we mean? Well, when you're in combat, you have to recognize the, the situation, make quick, decisive decisions. Southern must do just that against the defensive pressures of Creighton and manage their emotions. There's a lot on the line, as we've talked about. Can they control their emotions and relax and play? There's National Player of the Year candidate Kyle Corver. These Blue Jays have played a bunch of big games already this year. Beating Fresno State on Bracket Buster Saturday. Beating Notre Dame, as mentioned. Beating BYU. A group that on the road, Scott, this is the... Uh, this is the one that really gets your attention. In the last two and a half years, they are 17 and four on the road. And those who follow college basketball know how tough it is to win on the road. And these guys have won 26 in a row at home, Southern Illinois. Well, something's got to give here tonight. You talked about the continuity of this starting lineup for Creighton. That says a lot for why they're able to go into hostile environments like they have tonight here in Carbondale. But Carbondale plays with a lot of confidence here at home. 13 and 0 this season. Everything is on the line tonight. A number one seed in the Valley Tournament. Haas probably a Valley regular season championship. Postseason implications. It's senior night in Carbondale. Get ready for this one. Game on in the Valley. The first possession is Creighton's. Well, if you can't get fired up for this one, Mitch, you don't have a pulse. Or you don't like basketball because it's as good as it gets. A full house. The game has been sold out for a month. People were trying to sneak into the arena after the women's game earlier today house with the pull up and Creighton's on the board well, they're gonna need we talked about Larry that house. second sto score to add and compliment Kyle Corver Larry house a likely candidate SIU of uh, Creighton will throw a myriad of defenses at the Saluki they'll go three-quarter court they'll go 94 feet they'll go back in their half court sets Dana Altman that's one of the staples of his team always trying to mix it up defensively and confuse the other team SIU talking about Creighton's big games. They've had them as well in their run last year when they blew out Texas Tech and beat Georgia with sweet sweet to the sweet 16 misfiring from three is Williams. Well, Darren Brooks guards Kyle Corver watch what's going on off the ball. Brooks will not leave Corver. Brody Darren deep over Dearman and scores. Well, they've got to get some production from Brody Darren in their last game Wednesday night against SMS only had 1.3 rebounds. Reach by Tyler McKinney of Creighton trying to get something out of the Blue Jay press. Kent Williams with a basketball now to get SIU in their set. Well, he'll initiate their offense, but then he likes to work off the ball. So once he makes that initial pass, look for him to go find some screens. Sly Willis tough in the middle, leaves it short. Darren with a rebound. 4 0 Creighton early. Emotion oozing out of this arena. The skip to House for three, and Creighton is red hot. Larry House, that's his 16th three of the year. Well, and House knocks that down. They're going to be awfully tough to guard because they're going to have to double team Kyle Clover down on the post. I'm going to give Kent Williams some props here, though. There is no way, Scott, this team is Brooks launches for three. Not there. And the rebound to House. 
the fact that Kent Williams, you can argue if he's a point guard or not, but he's 2.68 to one and assist to turnover. If he didn't take the role this year, and it's an unselfish role, this team would not be 20 and five. Absolutely not. He led the Valley, a little, not very many people know this, in assist to turnover ratio last year. He's really stepped up his game this year and really been a leader, probably sacrificed a little bit in the scoring column to do that. Aaron this time misfiring on the jump hook. Brooks gets out and runs. Dearman, a collision. Paul Jansen calls an offensive foul on Jermaine Dearman. Well, you can sense the jitters for Southern here early. Playing a little bit quicker than they want to, and that's one thing Bruce Weber talked about the shoot around. Guys, we don't have to hurry. The emotions are going to be high. You're going to have a tendency to play a little faster than normal. Just settle down, relax. We're fine. Corver being guarded by Brooks. Another jump hook from Darren. Darren, the Northwestern transfer, has hit one and missed two. 7 nothing Creighton. Brooks robbed by the rim. Willis has it blocked. Goaltending. Give two points to Sylvester Willis. A bonus bucket in the middle for the Saluki. Well, excellent call by the referee and Sylvester Willis that's what he brings to his ball club not a great score you see the shot going up from the corner but Willis probably the best athlete on the Saluki basketball team goes up Darren knocks the rim great call by the official he just was not a factor as he sets down now to get a rest in the game in Omaha in fact he only played nine minutes no points Corver again Brooks is guarding him Steal by Williams, a breakout for Dearman. Corbin chasing. Corver can't catch up. Dearman, one of the best running big men in the valley, but great kick ahead by Kent Williams. The bigger the game, it seems like the best games Dearman has. Average 20 points and nine boards in the NCAAs last year. He likes the bright lights, doesn't he? We had him on TV earlier against Wichita State. He had his career high 26. A steal by Lindemann just sneaking in behind Brian Turner. Dabbert. Three cracks for Creighton. They'll get free throws. Well, that's one of the things Bruce Weber was concerned about. Creighton's ability to go to the offensive glass. And it's like Dabbert just picked up a technical. Now, this is an example of the emotions. Going a little over the top, and this is something we discussed all day long. This campus has been waiting this for this game for a month. Well, the officials are going to want to make sure they keep this ball game under their control with the emotions being high. And I think Dabbert had a little something to say after he went after two offensive rebounds and pretty quick technical, but I like the idea of getting the game under control. Let's take a look at this now. Dabber is involved in trying to get the stick back. That's his second effort. That's his third effort as he goes up there. And that's the foul there on Warren. And he has something to say to Williams as he goes back to the free throw line. And maybe a little quick on the technical, but I like the fact that they're trying to keep the ball game under control here early. So it was really a taunting of Williams after the foul was called. Where he's in the... Uh, as Williams will get a couple technicals here, and that's a rare miss by Kent Williams. Well, if I'm going to taunt somebody, I'm going to get my money's worth and go after him a little more than that. <laughs> you don't want to get Kent Williams free shots here, but he gets them. It also goes as a personal foul against Dabbert, and now Dabbert will get the two free throws he was going to have before the technical. Well, the jacket's off for Dana Altman here early, four minutes in. He's got the men in black going today. I like that. I know he and Coach Spoonauer are friends, so maybe he's ditching the tie look and going with the uh, sweater look. Dabbert hits a free throw, one of the better foul-shooting big men in the country at 80%. What about the shooting background for Joe Dabber here, Scott? <laughs> well, it's not quite the Cameron crazies at Duke, but it's pretty tough to shoot into that kind of mess. And also in for great number 34, Mike Brown. Again, they camped out for days to get their tickets. We had people impersonating 
the cleanup crew after the women's game in here at 2 o'clock. They cleaned the arena. They found guys in the bathroom. They brought in dogs to sniff them out. <laughs> they were hiding on all corners of SIU Arena. Creighton leads it 9-5. to five. We have played just over four minutes. Josh Warren trying to get it inside. Kicked out by Lindemann. With a dead ball, we'll step aside. It is a huge night in Carbondale. The Salukis trail by five and need more of this from Jermaine Deer. Creighton, the nation's winningest team at 25 wins, leading Southern Illinois with 20 wins, 9-5. to five. Don't miss a minute of the 2003 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference men's basketball tournament. We call it Arch Madness. March 7 through 10 at Savas Center in downtown St. Louis. It will be great Valley action. You're going to just get more of this. Get your tickets today at the 2003 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference men's basketball tournament. And in many ways, ticket sales are going uh, very, very well. Could set records. Paul Jansen brought in Kyle Korver and Kent Williams there for a little conference. Well, they're the two leaders of these ball clubs. And again, that technical by Dabbert. The referees want to make sure they get this under control. Who better to get their teams under control than the two stars? Shooting here early. Creighton. Creighton back to the zone. Creighton goes to a zone, and Brian Turner drains a three. This guy has been outstanding. 60% from three, Scott, in conference play. Well, that's 12 for 15 from three in his last seven ball games. He is on fire. Great spark off the bench. 9-8 lead for Creighton. Corver has yet to have an attempt. Brooks doing a good job chasing him off those screens. The Anthony Batten, Creighton likes to play 10 players. Nice skip pass. Funk's a freshman. Good defense that time by the Salukis. Turner off the dribble. Last touch by Josh Warren. Anthony Bowden gives his team an extra gear on both ends of the floor. Nine to eight, great. Creighton's like a football team, Scott. I wonder how thick their playbook is. <laughs> it's awfully thick, and they've got good, smart, heady players that can absorb all the information that Dana Altman throws at them. Tough team to prepare for. Funk, a little pitch and kick. SIU recovering on defense very nicely. SIU has gotten after the defense. Well, if you're physical with Creighton, you get him boxed out 12, 15 feet. That's not the shot Mike Grimes wants to shoot. Warren deep on Grimes. Not there with the offhand. Brooks being careful not to lose. Corver in transition, but Funk gets what's essentially a free throw, a 15-footer for his first bucket. Well, I really like this freshman, six foot three freshman, shooting 58% from three the last five games. Really plays within himself. He's a perfect backup point guard for this Creighton Blue Jay team. Big time player in high school at Sioux City, Helan Dearman out on the floor. And when he does that, he's unstoppable. He makes you come out and guard him with a big player. I'm telling you, you don't want to get Jermaine Dearman started because when he gets started, he can score him in bunches. Four for Dearman. Funk. This one was tougher. Turner was there, and Southern Illinois could take the lead if they score. Well, Kent Williams awfully quiet. See if they can't get him a look. He's trying to get one against Funk. Dearman, the lead is the... The Egyptian Dogs have the lead on two more points by Dearman. Well, here comes the crowd. If Jermaine Dearman's going to knock that shot down, they're going to be tough to guard because when he plays that two-man game with Kent Williams, you got to pick your poison. And not only is Brooks not letting Corver shoot it right now, he's not letting him catch it. Isn't it amazing when you knock down some shots how your defense intensity really picks up? All five guys really getting after their man. Again, when Dearman steps out, he makes it tough to guard. Watch a little screen and roll. Both Creighton defenders hedge out on Williams. you got to respect Williams. That leaves Dearman open on the pick and fade. Dearman was 7 of 7 in a game against Evansville from the field. Bowden in the corner with 10 to shoot. 
Now Schoen is on Corver. McKinney travels with him. Now they've switched up. Blake Schoen was guarding Corver that time. Well, Darren Brooks out of the ball game, and Schoen's a tough young man, six foot three freshman. They like that matchup as well, but look for Darren Brooks to get a quick rest and get back in on Corver. Again, Kyle Corver, no attempts, and we played five and a half minutes. Seven and a half minutes we've played and no shots. Williams takes it on the dribble. Swings it in there. Kent Williams has his first field goal. Well, that's what makes him such a special player, Mitch. His freshman, sophomore year, he's pretty much a standing catch. Now he can put it on the floor two times and make a tough shot in the lane. Tough to guard when you can put it on the floor. Now Harrison is on Corver. They switch Schoen on it. Well, they'll switch guard to guard. They will not switch a big man on them, but if he's coming off the screen, they will run multiple defenders at him. Great defense by Southern Illinois. Hairston, excellent off the dribble. Schoen didn't want it. Finds Willis. Battle for the ball. Southern Illinois will keep it. Kent Williams has a chance to be the first player in SIU history to lead the Salukis in scoring all four years of his eligibility. A 9-2 run has Southern Illinois leading Creighton 14-11. Tonight's Prairie Farms Missouri Valley Conference scholar athlete is SIU's Kent Williams. A senior from Mount Vernon, Illinois, Williams is carrying a 3-1 in marketing, a two-time All-Valley scholar athlete choice. Academics are important to the Valley. Let's salute Kent Williams, tonight's Prairie Farms Missouri Valley Conference scholar athlete. And his teammates are defending big time on Creighton. Well, when a guy like Kyle Corver's made 352 three-pointers, you better pay attention to where he is. And Southern doing a real good job being physical, switching out. Anytime he gets an open look, they're switching out on him, being physical, fighting through those screens. Brad Corn hits on an inbounds play for the Salukis. It is a three for Corn. He had a career high 15 against Creighton a year ago in Omaha. Corver stolen by Williams. The Salukis lead by six after trailing by as many as seven. Nine, I guess, to start the game. A missed dunk by Williams. Creighton has the best shot changers in the league. Well, Brody Darren. Larry House, even Corver, pretty effective down around the blocks. Fell away from the ball. It's going to be a hold on Southern Illinois. There's a look at the defense of the Salukis. One of nine is Creighton in the last seven and a half minutes. Fell on Stetson Hairston. Well, I know Southern's doing a nice job on Corver. Now they got corn on Corver to put a little more size on him. But Creighton's got to find a way to free him up for shots. Corver. Darren. House. Long. Darren, great rebound, but he throws down. Willis to get to the ball, and Brody Darren's picked up his first foul. Well, you know it's going to be physical down low, and Sylvester Willis, we saw him get two big offensive rebounds, and that time keeping out big Brody Darren from getting that offensive rebound. Sylvester Willis has given him great minutes here early. Seventeen to eleven Southern Illinois after Creighton jumped out to an early lead and Both these teams are just so well scouted. They know everything that they're gonna run They put a few wrinkles in at the shoot around today But it's just so difficult to get shots this late in the season when they've already played each other once they've seen each other on film 15 20 times so really I would expect, Mitch, that really the secondary type players, the role players, are really going to decide who's going to win this game because it's going to be tough for Corver and Williams to really have big nights. This is a kid, now Darren Brooks, as we take a look at him, that really merits some all-conference consideration. Even when you put his numbers up against the likes of Kent Williams and a Kyle Corver, some of his numbers compare very favorably. Now a turnover by Creighton. Corn has just hit a three. Not this time. Corver has it in transition. Fakes the shot, finds Milner underneath and can't convert. I think it was Brooks underneath to change it. That was a good idea by Corver. Oh. 
Brooks not there on the window. Another rebound for Corver. Bodies down. Six point lead for Southern Illinois at the 941 mark of the half. Darren blocking foul on Brad Corn. Oh, that was awfully close. Brody Darren almost picking up his second personal. Creighton will do a good job in transition trying to get easy baskets and find their big fella down on the post and turns the corner a little bit. Probably not squared up. Either a no call or probably a charge. I mean, no call or a block. Scott, your thoughts here because we have played over 11 minutes and Kyle Korver has yet to take a shot. Well, you know how explosive he is. They're going to find ways to get him the basketball, but Southern's just suffocating him and playing him very, very physical. So he's going to have to get something off the dribble. Pull up over Brooks. Great defense again by Darren Brooks. A hand in Korver's face to change it. They are not going to let him come off the screen and get a good look. They're going to double out at the expense of somebody else knocking a shot down. They're not going to let him get going. Dearman, Corver on it. Williams with McKinney on it. Robbed by the rim, and Darren shows his strength to get the board. Now Dearman out on him because it's the secondary offense here for Freight. Corver way off the mark. I think Dearman may have bothered him a little bit with his size. And Dearman back to score. All of Dearman's points have been out on the floor. He's got eight to lead all scores. Well, and he's streaky from the perimeter, but when you knock that first one down, it gives you a lot of confidence. And Southern Illinois rolling. Southern Illinois leading 19 to 11. Oh, Dearman with made the play on Corver on the defensive end and runs the court. We've seen him run the court here early in the game, facing up, knocking down that short 15-footer, his third 15-footer of this ballgame. Creighton led this game 7 to nothing. They have been outscored 19 to 4 by Southern Illinois, and right now nothing is easy for Creighton because of the Saluki defense. They are really getting after it. It all started with that man, Jermaine Dearman. They got the steal. He ran the four. Kent Williams found him. That started this run. Creighton's really going to have to revisit their offensive strategy, make sure that they set hard physical screens to get Corver some open looks or some of his teammates are going to have to step into those seams and start to be more aggressive offensively. Big time sellout crowd here in Carbondale. Rocky start for the Salukis, but defense has propelled them to this eight point lead and Corver sets down for a moment. Well, I think Dana Alba wanted to sit him down, let him gather himself a little bit, settle down. But it's critical junction time for Creighton. They've got to get some good looks with Corver out of the ballgame. And Lindemann, the Mosquito, pulls up and hits the <laughs> shot. Michael, the Mosquito, Lindemann. He's a pass at times for the opponent, isn't he? A couple of opponents he's given malaria to. I mean, he'll come <laughs> up with some huge shots. Eight minutes to play in the first half. The Salukis by six. A foul on Darren, hedging out. Kent Williams. So That's two fouls on Brody Darren. Two fouls on Darren. It's all been on the line tonight in Little Egypt. Southern Illinois leading Creighton 19 to 13. 756 left in the first half. Let's take a quick look at the Valley standings brought to you by Edward Jones. More than 130 years of experience helping individuals build financial security. Edward Jones. For tonight's purposes, all you need to know, the top two teams. That's why this game is so big. The team that wins tonight gets the number one seed in the postseason tournament, Arch Madness. Now, Kyle Corver's been frustrated, Scott Heimar. Well, Southern Illinois really getting after him, being real physical with them on the defensive end, not a Allowing themselves to be screened. Really getting after him, showing some size with Jermaine Dearman. And Jermaine Dearman came back to nail another shot. Ten points for Jermaine Dearman. He is five of five from the field. Wow, he's got it rolling again. We talked about once he gets his confidence going, he's one of the better players in this league. He loves TV games, and it's seemingly the bigger the game, the better he likes it. The one exception was last year against Creighton. 
in the Valley title game in St. Louis where he had just eight points. Corver's still not out there. Pass deflected. But there's only six to shoot here for DeAnthony Bowden. Puts up the shot. Not there, and it's a shot clock violation. The shot never touched the rim. Well, I tell you what, the Southern Illinois coaches wanted them, the referees to let that one go because they had numbers streaking the other way, but Creighton, again, struggling offensively, can't get anything going. The way they're going to have to get in this ball game is stop somebody on this end. Dearman to the rack this time. He'll get free throws. Well, if you can beat their pressure, Mitch, you can get good looks at the basket. Creighton likes to apply that full court pressure. Southern does a good job reversing the court, getting the ball to Dearman. Dearman's excellent in the open court, drawing the foul. Dearman, 63% at the line. As Corver comes back into the Creighton lineup, no points a bagel without cream cheese for Corver, and just three rebounds. He has only attempted. Two shots, both of those very tightly contested. You know, I asked Bruce Weber before the game, how do you think the emotions are going to affect Jermaine Dearman and Kent Williams? He said, well, Jermaine Dearman's self-imposed nickname is Big Game Jermaine, and he's living up to that tonight. His unself-imposed one is, uh, well, they call him Bugs or Buggy. Now, there is the pull-up by Corver. Now, he can get him in lightning fashion. Yeah, don't, don't blink, because he can score in bunches as well. And... When he can get it going off the dribble it hit with his size at six foot seven, he's tough to match up with. 635 left in the half. Now Brooks is in trouble against the pressure. Saved by Warren. Pretty good pressure that time by Creighton. Hairston. He is good off the dribble, but no magnetic magic there. Anthony Bowden. Grimes with the board. Well, Grimes posting up really hard, demanding the basketball. Grimes. Dearman's there. Loose ball. Creighton keeps it. Good defense by Warren and Dearman, but hustle by Dana Altman's team. Well, and guess who was in the middle of it? Kyle Corver not having a great night offensively. And he went after Mike Grimes and said, Mike, you got to go stronger than that. And then Corver, not only does he shoot it, not only has he made 352 three-pointers, he gets after the loose ball, but Southern doing a great job on him here with 553 with the goose egg. Corver's first bucket at 642 of the half. And there's a foul on Southern Illinois trying to fight over the screen. Corver was trying to rub, and Brooks was rubbing the rub. Well, that's what they're going to try to do. you got to get so close to them that you, you don't allow yourself to be screened, and that's what Darren Brooks is trying to fight over that screen, get himself between Corver and the offensive player for Dayton. Watch him hugging him, trying to get inside of Mike Grimes that time. Gets called for the personal. Grimes for the driving lane. Willis had no choice but the foul. And Mike Grimes will go to the line for the Creighton Blue Jays. One of the reasons Creighton has, lost, has won 25 games this year, 25 and 3, is they've had different people do different things on different nights. But Grimes has given them consistent minutes, Scott, off the bench. Well, and they've got great bench production. Mike Grimes, the focal point of that bench production, the bench is averaging 30 points, 12 rebounds, and 6 assists. That's getting it done. Dane Altman plays 10 guys, and that pressure eventually wears you out. Two free throws for Grimes. Saluki's up by five, trailed by seven, led by nine. Well, you feel like Southern must have a 15-point lead. You look up, they're only up five. Now they're up eight. Kent Williams from the corner. The Mount Vernon machine gets his first three. 51% from three in the ballot. Well, he's as pure as they come when he gets both eyes on the basket. A little bit of room, it's going down. Grimes again. They back off him. He leaves it thin. Dearman with the board. Oh, 
Southern Illinois a little careless with the ball. <laughs> a little loose with that ball. Trying to go inside back door and a careless pass by Hairston. Well, you don't need to thread the needle. You got good things happening offensively. Grimes underneath. He gets undercut by Williams. Now we talk about Kyle Corver working without the ball. Kent Williams can do more of the same. Well, he's one of the best at the country working without the ball, setting his man up that time, going hard off that staggered screen, just enough room where he can get that ball up from the corner. And then you see him rotating over defensively. It's called for the block on Grimes. Number 10, Nathan Pumpkin for the Blue Jays. Kent Williams, second in scoring. In SIU history, Charlie Vaughn in the late 50s, early 60s, the only guy ahead of Kent Williams. 80 points short of 2,000 points in his career. Started every game in his career, all 124 games. Not only is he a great player, he's a durable player. Mike Grimes with a one and one. He's hit three free throws in a row. Grimes out of the St. Louis area. And, uh, Pretty good genetics in the family, you're telling He's got a great-looking brother who's a junior at Hazelwood Central, Kalen, who's being recruited by everybody in the country. Grimes hits both free throws, and Creighton staying within earshot here, trailing by six at 4.34 left in the half. Dabbard is back in, one of the three post-committee men that Creighton plays. Talk about fighter pilot at the outset of the game. Southern Illinois has done a good job of recognizing the defenses that Creighton is in. Yeah, their defense, that full court pressure hasn't really affected Southern. Kick out for Brooks. Wide and strong. Corver can shoot deep ones. Won't do it that deep. I like what Bruce Weber's doing. He's running several guys at Corver. Now he's got corn on him at six foot seven. It's gonna be tougher for Corver to get a clean look. He was tough on Corn though, in the game in Omaha. Another air ball. Two air balls from Corver in his four attempts. Turner trying to answer Willis with another offensive rebound. Well, how good has he been on the offensive end doing the little things for this Saluki ball club? Williams sets up Corn. Robbed by the rim. Well, you feel if one of those shots would fall, this roof would blow off the building. The Anthony Bowden goes fast, sometimes too fast. <laughs> this time, just the right speed, no traffic ticket. Well, that's what he does. When he gets the ball in transition, he's going to push it. And he does that as well as anybody for Creighton and just finds enough open court space, draws the foul by Turner, and strong enough to go up and finish. You know, he's a change of pace guy. When he comes into the game, he does everything so much faster. The, the other, the opponent's kind of like, well, who's this guy? <laughs> exactly. You know, where does he fit into the equation? Well, it speeds up the game for Crane. They play a little bit more deliberately with him out of the ball game. He comes in, it gives him a nice look. Dane Altman loves to have that. And defensively, Bowden really gets after it on their pressure. Bowden at the line, not so much. 52%. Could have a career high 17 against Drake. Stoinks this one on the front end of a one and one. Twenty-five, twenty-one, Southern Illinois at the three fifteen mark. Great dropping back to a little matchup zone this possession. Trying to locate shooters. Corn is one of them. That's your big time shooter. He loves his own. Give him the ball. Well, I thought that was even a little deep for Kent Williams, about three and a half feet behind the line, and he is fired up, getting the crowd going. He has nine tonight. He had nine in the entire game here a year ago, but hit the big three that gave Southern Illinois the win. Back to a seven-point Saluki lead. House trying to create. Chases his miss and score. Well, we've seen his athleticism in the ball game. That's the second time he's gotten in the lane and drawn some contact and finished. Kent Williams really stretching that zone. You got to get out and shade his side wherever he is. Inside on the dribble, Kent Williams is on fire. He's got 11. Boy, is he efficient. 
That time they run out on him, puts it on the floor one time. The Anthony Bowden, Daverts in the cylinder. Offensive basket interference. Seven point lead, 11 points from Kent Williams. One of the best the Valley has ever had. And the Salukis are up by seven. Chaluki is an Egyptian dog. This Egyptian dog needs a veterinarian. The team knows it though. 30 to 23, the Salukis lead by seven. Let's go to our great equalizer stat. Brought to you by Equal Sweetener. Three point shooting. And there's your difference in the game. Creighton has hit only one three, and that was Larry House. Well, Southern really getting after Corver and the rest of the shooters for Creighton. Southern only getting great looks on the offensive end. Their numbers actually could be a little bit better, but when you get the ball to old number 33, those numbers tend to go up. Now it's senior night here in Carbondale. The two seniors stepping up. It's unbelievable. They both have 11 points. Williams four for six. Dearman five for five. It's amazing the composure that they're playing with on this emotional night. SIU with 12 field goals, eight assists in those 12 field goals. Really is amazing the poise and composure that Kent Williams and Dearman are playing with. I remember my senior night, I was a basket case for about 30 minutes before I even got on the scoreboard, shot three air balls in the first half. <laughs> so for them to come out and be calm as a cucumber, it's unbelievable. Four to shoot, Warren's got to crank it and hit it. Josh Warren, his first basket of the game. Nine point lead for Southern Illinois. 70 seconds left in the half. Dabbert forcing it. And a foul. Is this an offensive foul? It is. Illegal screen on Dearman. That's his second personal foul. Well, he can't afford to pick up his third the way he's playing, trying to get his buddy Kent Williams open on a little flare screen. Just moved a little bit too much. We're going to take a look at it. That possession. I saw Kent Williams coming wide open. You'll see Dearman going down on the post trying to find number 33 and just moves just enough to get Bowden right before Kent Williams knocks down that shot. Right now in a two for one situation. Dearman, 11 points, hasn't missed a shot. Corver, just two points. Grimes. House. Off SIU, now with 36.4 left. Creighton can take it down. The differential is 1.4 seconds, game clock, shot clock. Well, expect them to take the last shot of the half here. I'm sure Dane Altman has instructed them to do so. No sense in giving Southern another possession the way they're playing on the offensive end. Very impressed with the Saluki defense. Creighton, though, has been here before. They were down by 13 to Southern Illinois and Omaha. Down 16 to TCU in the second half. Down 17 to Southwest Missouri State in Omaha. This is a veteran team that will not panic. Expect them to make a run. 10 to shoot. Funk against Hairston. Left-handed layup not there. Great defense by Southern Illinois. It's a held ball. The arrow is Southern Illinois. I tell you what, Sylvester Willis has had a great first half. Not doing a lot on the offensive scoring column, but doing big time work on the on the boards. Seven rebounds for Sylvester Willis. Well, three of those on the offensive end. A reminder that this year, if you're looking for the season's hottest styles, then look no further than Aeropostal. Aeropostal provides the hottest athletically inspired clothes for guys and girls. For store locations, visit their website at aeropostal.com. Spell it out, A-E-R-O-P-O-S-T-A-L-E.com. They're proud to sponsor the Valley. If they put a Saluki dog on it, they'd sell about 10,000 Aeropostal shirts in here tonight. Oh, you could sell a lot of merchandise with the way the Salukis are playing, and these fans have been fired up. Well, this is a game you look at the schedule back in September when they released the schedule and you go, boy, that could be a huge game. Rarely when you have that type of a matchup in the fall does it really work out. But guess what? We're here on March 1st playing for the conference championship. The two teams that we thought would be here. Two seconds even left in the half. Creighton has fouls to give here. Horn slings it. Warren's going to get an okay look. 
This is the banker. And Southern Illinois will lead at halftime. But Scott, here's an interesting stat. In this series, the last four teams that trailed at halftime in this series came back to win the game. Interesting. Well, you know Dana Altman's going to get his team ready to go here in the second half to make a run. Hang on, don't go away. A great first half by Southern Illinois, leading 32-23. Valley Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By John Q. Hammonds Hotels, the leading independent owner and manager of upscale hotels and meeting facilities. By Prairie Farms, family of dairies, Prairie Farms, Highland and Roberts Dairies, serving Mid-America with quality fresh dairy products every day. By Pepsi, the choice of the Missouri Valley Conference, the joy of Pepsi. And by your Chrysler Jeep dealers, where every vehicle is just your type. Because at Chrysler, drive equals love. Southern Illinois, Doug Elgin watching tonight, the innovative commissioner of the Missouri Valley Conference, along with his wife, Melaine, 32 to 23, Southern Illinois leading Creighton here at halftime. A reminder, whether it's Des Moines, Omaha, Evansville, make sure that Holiday Inn is your stay for business or pleasure. Your stay will be comfortable at the Holiday Inn no matter what. Call 1-800-HOLIDAY to make your reservation today at Holiday Inns all throughout the Missouri Valley Conference. Mitch Holtis back with you along with Scott Highmark. The first thing we need to talk about is Southern Illinois suffocating defense on Kyle Corbin. Well, they've done a fantastic job being very physical, running three and four defenders. Primarily, Darren Brooks was the primary guy. They threw Brad Korn to throw a little more size. Even Jermaine Dearman got a look at Corver doing a great job not getting screened by Creighton. Only two points. Believe me, he's going to come out strong in the second half. Now, the other side of this has been the offense of the two seniors. Well, it's amazing. 22 points between Dearman and Kent Williams, both very efficient on the offensive end. Apparently, the emotions have not affected them. They've come out and led their teams to their lead. Time now to announce our State Farm Missouri Valley Conference player of the week and it's Aaron Hogg of Wichita State a junior from Indianapolis Indiana Hogg shot 14 to 24 from the field 5 of 10 from 3 and 75 percent at the line he averaged 20 points a game as the Shockers won on the road at Drake at the Knapp Center and then won at Indiana State by nine for Mark Turgeon's team Hogg averaged five rebounds and two assists in those two games congratulations to Wichita State's Aaron Hogg this week State Farm Missouri Valley Conference player of the week. Southern Illinois a hard charging team in the last 10 minutes. They lead it by nine at halftime here in Carbondale. Tonight's Phillips 66 Missouri Valley Conference legend is Bob Harstad of Creighton, a native of Loveland, Colorado. Harstad was a key figure in Creighton capturing two Valley Conference tournament titles and securing two trips to the NCAA tournament. A three-time All-Valley Conference selection, Harstad was the league's player of the year in 1990. A 6'6 forward who is one of four Missouri Valley Conference players to have 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. Creighton's Bob Harstad, tonight's Phillips 66 Missouri Valley Conference legend. Nestle Purina Millennium Moment features the 2002 conference matchup between Creighton and Southern Illinois at the SIU Arena. In front of a boisterous Carbondale crowd, Creighton, paced by Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year Kyle Korver, stormed to an 11-point halftime lead. And the Blue Jays led by as many as 13 in the second half. But Saluki standout Kent Williams hit a three-pointer and was fouled with two minutes remaining. Williams hit the free throw to close the gap to 15. 59-58. Stetson Harrison came back with an electrifying dunk for the Salukis, but the big play came later. With Creighton up 62-60, Williams hit this three-pointer with just 22 seconds left to put the Salukis ahead to stay for tonight's Nestle Purina Millennium Moment. Schultz is back with Scott Highmark in Carbondale, Illinois. The Southern Illinois Salukis leading the Creighton Blue Jays at halftime, 32-23.
Scott, let's go to our ConAgra first half stats brought to you by ConAgra Foods. We set America's table at home and away. Well, it's no secret that Creighton really struggling on the offensive end, only shooting 28% from the field. Ironically, they shot 38% against SMS on Wednesday and won. Three-point shooting, only one for seven. That's got to improve. They are getting no uncontested looks from three. Southern doing a fantastic job. Front court scoring, Southern doing a great job. 11 of those 16 coming from Jermaine Dearman. Creighton has spent much of the year as one of the, well, the nation's best shooting team from the field, but just 29% in the first half credit Southern Illinois' outstanding defense. Creighton and Southern Illinois, the second half comes up after this. The Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by Budweiser, delivering beer at its best with the crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. Edward Jones, more than 130 years of experience helping individuals build financial security. By ConAgra Foods, we set America's table at home and away. By Pepsi, the choice of the Missouri Valley Conference, the joy of Pepsi. And by the Nestle Carina Company of Checkerboard Square. Southern Illinois with a seven-point lead. Nine-point lead, actually, at halftime, 32-23. The lead at halftime here for SIU. Tomorrow, women's basketball on Fox from the Valley. Wichita State, their rivalry in Springfield against Southwest Missouri State. Daryl Smith takes his team to take on Coach Abe's team in Springfield. And then on Monday, it is our championship Monday on Fox. These Salukis of SIU and Bruce Weber will go to Illinois State to take on their upstate rivals, the Redbirds at Redbird Arena. Scott, you'll be there. I'll be in Omaha. The final game in the history of Civic Auditorium in Omaha. The final night of the Civic Odd is Creighton. will have their senior night for Kyle Korver and others as they host Wichita State. Well, neither one of those games are going to be easy games for these two teams going on the road at Illinois State. Southern's going to have to come with their game. Creighton, even though it's senior night, last year on the last Monday, they lost to Drake to give Southern a piece of the conference championship. Just in case you thought about tuning away, Look at this again. I said at the end of the half, it bears repeating. The team trailing in half in this game the last four times has come back to win. Creighton had this lead on SIU last year at halftime. Lindemann has a toenail on the line and hits a two. Well, I'm telling you, Dana Altman, one of the best coaches in the country at managing on the fly, making adjustments at halftime. Believe me, they've done some things to find some good shots for their shooters. Other scores, Wichita State has upset Southwest Missouri State in Springfield, 71 to 65. That does ensure Wichita State is the three seed at Arch Madness in St. Louis, and Southwest Missouri State will be the four seed. The winner of tonight's game will be the one seed, the loser, the two seed. How about the job Mark Turgeon has done this year? Both he and Barry Henson have come out of nowhere to have great seasons. Bad look that time by the Salukis. Harrison, the shot went down to single digits. Shot clocks. And an off-balance look by Harrison, who has yet to score. And if you join this late, Kyle Korver, just two points. House in the lane, cutting to the void after he little jump pass to the corner. Well, again, the way they're shading Korver, somebody as a secondary scorer is going to have to pick up. Creighton two for two here in the second half. Brooks, nice shake and bake for Darren Brooks. That's his first basket of the night. Well, he's so calm and cool. Let's the game come to him. Quickly, the Blue Jays score as McKinney gets the basket. That's his first bucket of the night. Well, Creighton would like to get this game a little bit faster tempo. Southern real more, much more comfortable in the half-court set. Creighton really likes to get out, use their depth. We've got an official's timeout here. His house limping off, the, limps off the floor here. the junior college transfer. There's DeAnthony Bowden, also a Juco transfer. Bowden played at Jacksonville, Texas. Looks like house is cramping up here a little bit. Yeah, it's very warm here in this gymnasium with 10,000 people packed in here, and looks like they'll be able to rub out that cramp. Expect him to come back in the ballgame. What an atmosphere in here tonight. This place has been buzzing really for a month in anticipation of the game the last two days off the chart. Nice feed underneath. Dearman is defended from behind, gets it back and scores. He is just playing with great intensity and passion. He knows this is his last game in SIU Arena, and he's brought his A game. Dearman, six of seven from the field. Seven-point lead for the Salukis. Dearman not 
there on the bank. Scrum underneath. And the Salukis are out of bounds. There was no held ball. But one of the Salukis out of bounds. I think Tech Kent Williams took a shot to the mouth. He had to, he had to uh, stitch up a cut here last year. And he's as tough as they come. We've seen both of the superstars now getting on the floor, getting in to the middle of things or leading by example. That's exactly what you have to do. Scott, this is not a pretty boy game. If you got a pretty boy <laughs> game, you better find another one than this one because this is uh, rock em, sock em here. Well, when you're playing for the conference championship, there's so much on the line. Postseason bids on the line. The number one seed in the tourney. These young men realize the gravity of this game. Not for the faint of heart. Brooks has been outstanding on Corbin. They're in no roll. He's over the back. That's his third foul. Well, that's a big personal for Brody Darren because he gives him that inside physical presence. He's going to have to come out of the ball game. Dana Alton is going to check in Mike Grimes, but gets a great look here. Point blank look from six feet. You can't ask for a better shot than that. Brody Darren, first in blocks in the league. Had four Wednesday night against Southwest Missouri State, but now has three fouls and has to set. Brooks against Corver. Walk with it. We'll say up until that time, SIU, we talked about them being in fire fighter pilots. So far, they've played like top guns. They have been, <laughs> they've had a good fighter pilot kind of night. Well, they are recognizing what Creighton's doing to them on the defensive end. They're getting great looks, and when they get those opportunities, they're knocking them in. But really, the difference in the ball game is that man right there. And just as I say that, he shuts me up. Corver nails a three, tough three. It is only a matter of time before he gets started. He is too good a shooter. Scott, how good is he at using screens? He's unbelievable because he really comes off those screens tight, and he's got such a quick release and good, powerful legs to square himself up and knock that shot down. He's one of the better guys I've ever seen at fading or flaring off a screen. Well, and it's so hard to do that and square up at the same time and going hard, and he's excellent at that. Williams against a double team and got the roll. How tough was that shot by Kent Williams? Well, here comes Creighton to the other end. That's the tempo that they want to get going. The Anthony Bowden, he's their spark plug off the bench. Sylvester Willis picks up the foul. Kent Williams, though, works very hard against a trap and then help side. Well, he goes up, and he's really added a lot of physical strength to be able to take that type of contact, elevate in the lane, and finish that. It's something he couldn't do two years ago. That's why he scored almost 2,000 points in his college career. And then, while SIU was celebrating the basket, Creighton came flying down the floor with a fast break off the main basket. Well, that's the thing about this Creighton ball club. Dana Altman continuing to encourage his ball club. And that's what I love about Dana Altman. They're on the road. They're down six. They're not playing well. And instead of berating him, he's encouraging him, saying, guys, we're right there. We're not playing well, but we're right in this ball game. But they've been in this situation so many times this year. This is nothing new for them. Absolutely. Although this environment is pretty special here. There's a lot of energy here in SIU Arena. Yeah, because of those comebacks. Let's see. Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. In fact, eight of nine times they've trailed at half to come back to win. They did come back down eight with 12 minutes to go at Springfield Wednesday night against SMS. Five-point lead for the Salukis. Warren just inside the three-point line. He'll advise. Kent Williams chases it down and gets fouled by Grimes. Kent Williams is trying to just pull his team to a win. Man, is he a tough kid? He's got such great character going after that basketball. Those are winning basketball plays, going after loose balls. Your star player does it. Can't do anything but set that precedent for your team. The under-16 timeout. Five-point lead for the Salukis. Southern Illinois leading 38 to 33. Let's go to our Valley scoreboard brought to you by Amron UE, Missouri's largest electric utility provider. Battle of the Iowa schools won by Northern Iowa. Illinois State by 30 at Indiana State. Yikes. 
And then an upset. Two uh, road teams winning. Wichita State winning at SMS 71-65. And Evansville with a win over Bradley 54-51. That sets up a log jam now. Five, six, and seven teams in the league. Northern Iowa, Evansville, Bradley all seven and ten. Yes, yeah, seven and ten going into the final Monday. So we'll know one through four in the tournament after tonight. Seven through ten up for grabs. Mm -hmm. Kyle Forber just five points. Well, one thing we know is Arch Madness will be fun again this year. These two teams will be right in the thick of it. Nice use of the screen by Williams. He pops it in. 16 points. Kent Williams. What a great set play out of the timeout by Bruce Weber. You can tell a well-coached team. They come out, they execute the play, and he does the rest. McKinney. Rescued by Bowden. Was in trouble, get bailed out by a foul on Brian Turner. We've talked about how efficient Kent Williams has been here tonight, working without the basketball, and his teammates do a great job giving themselves up. You see Kent coming off that staggered double screen. Josh Warren doing a good job getting physical with Bowden, creates that space. Williams going to get a well deserved breather. You know, I talked about Carver using screens so well. This kid can too. Yeah, it'd be hard to choose between these two. How would you like to see a horse game between Carver and Williams? He'd be there all, well, <laughs> all week. It'd be like those old McDonald commercials when Bird and Magic were shooting them out of windows. Fresh shot clock. McKinney double pops. And an and one situation for Tyler McKinney. Or well, how about that? Your floor general only averages five points per game, steps up, knocks down a big basket. McKinney's been great for this Blue Jay basketball team, very much unheralded. Had a great game against Nebraska, Mitch. Get this, he had 12 assists and zero turnovers at Nebraska in their big win. Well, for the year, he's got 116 assists and just 44 turnovers. Get out of suburban Des Moines. Urbandale, Iowa, gets a three-point play with the free throw down. Four of these Creighton starters from the state of Iowa. Orver from Pella, McKinney from Urbandale, Darren from Harlan, and Michael Lindemann from Iowa Falls. I think the guys from Drake and Northern Iowa are scratching their heads, saying, how are we letting these guys get out of here? And they got a bunch of Iowa guys on their rosters. A lot of players in Iowa, aren't there? There are. Two at Kansas aren't too bad. Yeah, they're okay. Can call us. Yeah, they had their senior day today, blowing out Oklahoma State. This I use a little bit out of sync here, other than Williams. Blake Sean shoots it for three, not there. Deerman trying to chase it. And this is going to be off Creighton, out of bounds to Southern Illinois. So right now, other than Kent Williams. The Salukis don't have the same offensive rhythm they had in the last 10 minutes of the first half. Well, and Bruce Weber sensed the same thing that we did, and they checked Williams right back in. Offensively not in a great rhythm. When you don't have that go-to player, it's really hard offensively to figure out who you're supposed to go to, and Williams just offers that stability anytime he's in the game, whether he's scoring or not. Dearman, great save. What a great block by Grimes. SIU just stays right with it. Warren trying to shove guys out of there. He was great and trying to make it hard. And De'Anthony Bowden's called for the foul. <laughs> it's getting a little ugly here in the last couple of minutes. Take a look at this fantastic block by Mike Grimes coming out of nowhere. Look how high is top of the glass to get that one. Well, we've made the fighter pilot analogy tonight. At some point, you got to switch to your alternate tank here <laughs> on fuel because the emotions have burned off now. You've already had fatigue. Then you got to go whatever the next level is. Well, and that's what makes Creighton so hard to play against. And you see the illegal screen that time by Kent Williams trying to free up corn, but Creighton just keeps running waves and waves of guys at you. They, ten guys average double-figure minutes. And when you're Southern, Southern really only goes about seven, seven and a half people deep. Creighton down five. 14 minutes to go, a little over 14. Turnover by Corbin. The offense has come and gone, but for the most part, Scott, SIU's defense has been there all night. 
the only ugly shot that Williams has had. Well, again, another good look. You'll take that look all day long, but you're right. This is the end of the floor where you doesn't matter whether the ball goes in. It's all heart and desire. Now a holding foul on Stetson Hairston and Bruce Weber. He's about ready to fry an egg, and he does not need the stove to cook it. Well, he wants his guys. Well, he wants his guys, Mitch, to be physical on the defensive end. That's what how they've been successful here tonight. And you don't see it, but off the ball, Stetson Harrison and Darren Brooks both doing a great job being physical. That's a foul you can afford to give up. Grimes back it in, and a point blanker by Grimes. His first second half points. Creighton's within three. This crowd, big crowd, enthusiastic crowd, trying to exhort the Salukis to a bucket, corn short on a three. Darren Brooks stays right in the face of Kyle Corbin. House, Lindemann snaking underneath the mosquito with another bite. Wow, how, how did he get that one up? I forgot he was left handed. Kind of wormed his way in there, and they cut it to one. How about this Creighton Blue Jay basketball team and the resolve that they're showing here on the road? Rank 17th in the nation. Huge wins this year, beating Notre Dame on a neutral floor, and a great job by Williams to get free throws. Boy, does he have an idea about how to score? Comes off the lane, knows he has nowhere to go, but he sees the three Blue Jay defenders jump in the air. He doesn't even ball fake. He just jump stops. Uh, he does a little bit of a ball fake. I'm sorry. But you see three Blue Jays in the air and draws the foul, and he's going to go to the line. You, you talked in the first half, though, about the proper pace to play a game. When you look at this kid, he never gets sped up too fast. He just plays at the right pace. And, and he doesn't force many shots, and that's one thing Bruce Weber really has worked with him over the last couple of years and said, Kent, you can average 15 to 18 points a game on 10, 12 shots. You don't need to shoot 20 times, because if you shoot 20 times, you're going to take three or four bad shots. I'll give you one bad shot a game. That's all I'm going to give you. He's 75 percent at the line for the year, but one of three now two of four on the night. 17 for Kent Williams. 42 40 Southern Illinois still 1230 to go. Look at Brooks fighting through those screens getting out on Corver. He has been just outstanding horse or house trying to horse it up there and leaving it short. And a palming violation on Darren Brooks. Um, Bruce Rubber doesn't like it. We're going to take another look at it. You, know, you see Brooks bringing it down and this is, this is just like he did it back in Jennings High School. And I tell you what, if they're going to call that, you can call that every time. In college basketball, that's par for the course nowadays. I know it was a point of emphasis, what, a couple years ago, but. Ooh, that's, that's tough grading right there. Barber loses it. Turner defending. Tried to put it up over Corver and couldn't get it. Well, great job by Corver hustling back, altering that shot, saving a bucket. Good defense by Southern Illinois. I tell you, Darren Brooks is doing a job on Kyle Corver. Now a steal. Turner and Brooks with the double team. And a stop by Darren Brooks. Well, he deserved that for the way he's been playing on the defensive end. He gets rewarded that time with the big dunk. How many guards in the country lead their team in block shots? He had six steals against Wichita State. Darren Brooks deserves big time consideration for All Valley. A timeout called here in Carbondale. The Salukis lead Creighton 44 to 40. look at Chris Lowry, one of the assistants for Bruce Weber at Southern Illinois. His son, little son, Kahari, went through respiratory distress. He's in the hospital in St. Louis at the Barnes Children's Hospital. Erica, Chris's wife, is with Kahari. They are watching tonight, so we want to say hello and uh, those two in our thoughts and prayers, but you've got little ones, and I had little ones, and now they're bigger ones, but 
That's tough now. Well, well as big as this game is that that puts it all in perspective in terms of what's really important. 44 to 40 Southern Illinois leading Creighton by four at the 11 14 mark Lindemann slicing through the mosquito. Boy, how about Creighton they're shooting 80 percent here in the second half getting good looks Lindemann really giving him a boost two buckets here in the second half Lindemann avoiding the bug light he's got eight <laughs> points. Williams around McKinney easy bucket this time for Williams he's got 19. Well that's the third time he's just gone hard right off the dribble he likes to go to that right hand pulls up elevates knocks down the short jumper. McKinney using the pinch post and throws it away and Lindemann gets it back and Darren with the dunk it's the mosquito right now who's <laughs> keeping Creighton within a bucket well he's their glue guy he does all the little intangibles that don't necessarily show up on the stat sheet Lindemann really giving him a boost we are halfway through the second half Williams has been phenomenal great read and a throwdown by Willis Wow what a great look by Kent Williams if you think he can only score how about that pass in the big flush by Sylvester Wolf and we are seeing Scott right now where these two teams have combined for 45 wins and just eight losses just going to war Darren steal by Williams tip in Willis gets it Boy, the energy in this place is unreal right now. Kent Williams leading his team, trying to prove why he's the best player in the Missouri Valley Conference. Timeout by Dana Altman. 9-18, left to go in the game, and the Egyptian dogs are barking, and barking loud and barking long. Let's take a look at the throwdown by Willis, set up by Williams. Well, he's got such a great basketball IQ. Three Creighton defenders come after him, and he delivers it right on the money, in motion for Sylvester Willis. We know what kind of athlete he is. Bruce Weber changed this program. They've had great moments. This is a there's great tradition here at Southern Illinois, but they kind of went up and down and up and down. What he's done is brought consistency now to this program. He wins tonight. It's his 100th win in five years. You can do the math. Well, and obviously everybody was excited about their Sweet 16 appearance last year where they lost to UConn, but they beat Bobby Knight in Texas Tech, beat Georgia in NCAA. But Bruce Weber says, you know what? We got to go back to work because everybody's going to be coming after us. And they've certainly done that all season long, and they're playing with fantastic energy. Nice back door, a block by Willis. It's a foul on Willis, a special play set up by Dana Altman out of the timeout for Kyle Corbin. Well, we saw it on the other end. Bruce Weber found a double screen for Kent Williams and Dana Altman, a little chess match with, with Bruce Weber. They're really overplaying Corver on the wing. Beautiful delivery by Lindemann and a little bit of hand maybe that time by Willis. He didn't like the call. Corver, one of the best free throw shooters in America at 91%. Well, it's been one of those that one. He's got just five points tonight. He's had two different streaks of 20 straight free throws. Dane Altman is a tough hombre. I'm going to tell you what. He and Bruce Weather bo both out of the same ilk. Missed them both. That's news. Shooting 91% from the line. That's big news. Six point lead for Southern Illinois with possession at 8.55. We got Williams out of the ball game, so Southern needs to be real patient and get a good one. That's a good one. Darren Brooks is having a night. Creighton back in a hurry. Lindemann. McKinney for three. Off the Salukis. Timeout on the
the floor with 8.29 left to go in the game. The Salukis lead it by eight points. Darren Brooks big on both ends of the floor. Stupid hey, Dad. Bag. No, 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 I'm just kind of really want to show you something. What, what, what is it then? What is it? These aren't Pepsis. They're Pepsi Twists. You're a bunch of bloody magicians. Are we not the Osborns? You're not. We're the Osmonds. I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll. I dreamed the kids turn into the Osmonds. Oh, they're there, dear. Like twists. Pepsi Twist and Diet Pepsi Twist. It's a twist on a great thing. Southern Illinois back up by eight points. They led by nine at halftime. Bruce Weber's team with a great performance here so far. Be sure and join us for the 2003 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Tournament. March 13 through 15 at the Knapp Center in Des Moines, Iowa on the Drake campus. And the brought to you by State Farm. The 2003 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Tournament. It will be wide open. It'll be great. In the storyline, Kyle Korver held to just five points. And now you got sh showing on him, chasing him around those screens. With Brooks out of the ball game, Korver is two for five from the field. Just five shots by Korver. Twelve to shoot. McKinney somehow finds Lindemann. Misses on the shot. Hairston's got it. Numbers for the Salukis. They hold it up. I'll tell you what, that's a shot Lindemann's got to make. The way they're shading Corver, not letting their shooters get open looks, and you get a wide open look like that, that's two in a row that he's missed. Trying to get Dearman a look here, posting up on Corver. Forced it. Great rebound by Stetson Hairston. Good looking athlete. Only a sophomore, six foot three, powerful young man. Southern Illinois seeing blood in the water. Dearman has 15. Well, I was wondering where Jermaine Dearman was. Saluki's forgot about him a little bit. Might as well go back to the big fella. Weber was trying to get some looks for him. Corver on a quick turnaround. Corver, double pumper not there, gets his own board. And Lindemann gets a layup because Corver just stayed with it. Well, Corver, I'm telling you, he's frustrated, but he's playing. He is playing. He is going after the basketball. He's doing whatever it takes for his team to win. He's got 11 rebounds on the night. Only five points. He's giving his team his all. Eight-point lead for Southern Illinois at 54-46. 6.45 left in the game. Hey, look at the Blue Jays. They've been down before. Again, they were down eight on Wednesday night with 12 minutes to go, but they're running out of time. Southern Illinois has been outstanding. Southern Illinois by eight, 6.45 left in the game. Corver not shooting it, but he's doing other things. Well, he's got 11 rebounds. You see the beautiful pass to Lindenman, and he, he's going to have to find ways to lead his team to victory, and there's no way Creighton's going to be able to win with him only scoring five points. Kent Williams really stepping up big, having 19. He's got a supporting cast that allows Kent to let the game come to him. Corver does not. He's got to make something happen on the offensive end. Southern Illinois trying to finish the job here and secure the number one seed in the postseason tournament. McKinney with the layup off the steal, and again, Brooks a little casual with the pass to the wing. Well, every time you think this game is getting away from Creighton, they come up with a big play, and it's been Lindemann, it's been McKinney who've been making those plays to keep them in the ball game. Now House on Williams. Hairston. Not there, tip in. Who got it? Brooks? I don't know. It looks like Willis might have got his hand on it the way he's been playing tonight. You're right. They gave it to Brooks. Eight for Brooks all in the second half. And Brooks had that big tip in last week in the bracket buster game at the buzzer against Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Give the Salukis the win. Jump hook. Good, Darren. You know what's happening now. Corver is looking at going at the basket instead of settling for deep three. Well, they're obviously not going to let him get an open look, so he's got to make himself a threat, put it on the floor, like you said, find his teammates.
big sellout crowd. This game has been sold out for almost a month. Scalping tickets as much as 200 bucks a ticket. And there's a touch foul. House gets caught for the 15 foul. First foul on House. Kent Williams, brilliant tonight. 19 points. His team sniffing a Valley title. Southern Illinois leading by six here over Creighton. You bet the madness starts at the arch. Next weekend we will be at Savas Center for the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference postseason tournament. If you're looking for this season's hottest styles, hey, get ready for the uh, Arch Madness by shopping at Aeropost Stall. Provides the hottest athletic-inspired clothes for guys and girls. Visit the store locations. Or for store locations, go to the website at aeropostall.com. Spell it out. A-E-R-O-P-O-S-T-A-L-E. -E. Proud to sponsor the Valley Aeropostall. SIU with possession. 519 left in the game. Southern Illinois leading by six. Creighton's last lead was 11 to 10, although Creighton started the game with a 7-0 advantage. Brooks. Willis on the follow dunk. Where did he come from? It's super slide. Holy cow, is he playing with some fire tonight? None in Omaha against Creighton. House, tough defense. Willis gets a rebound. Oh, he's been a world beater here tonight. It's not super fly, it's super slide. <laughs> Got some springs in those shoes. Willis, eight points, ten rebounds. to shoot. Williams in the corner. Corver on it. Three to shoot. Williams over Corver. Got it! You gotta like that. He looks Corver right in the eye. Squares him up and knocks down the big three. And jumping into the passing lane is Dearman. It's out of bounds to Creighton. Biggest lead of the game. 61-50 to 50 for Southern Illinois. They've opened up a wound here. Can Creighton stop the bleeding? Well, I tell you, Williams has been remarkable here this evening. Coming off the flare screen, he and Corver matched up one-on-one. -on -one. Shot clock running down, squares him up. Corver doesn't get a hand up, and he knocks it in. Corver, hard take to the basket. He'll get free throws. Well, you'd like to see him do a little bit more of that. Putting the ball on the floor, he's certainly capable of doing that. Defense is certainly converged when he puts the ball on the floor. 17 fouls now on Southern Illinois, but this is a shooting foul for Kyle Corver, who is 0 for 2 at the line tonight. And that's one of the things Kyle Corver is going to have to do in the offseason if he wants to play at the next level, which I certainly believe that he will get that shot, will play in the NBA. The way he shoots it, he's got great size for a two-guard in the NBA. But he's really got to work on putting the ball on the floor, maybe put on 10, 15 pounds of muscle so he can take the ball to the basket. He is Kukoc-like. That's who reminds you of one of those big European guards. 61-52, the Salukis by nine. Schultz back in Carbondale, Illinois. Creighton trailing Southern Illinois, 61-52. Our national car rental game reset. Creighton with a 60-30 left and timeout-wise. The arrow belongs to Southern Illinois. They got three timeouts left. It's been a throwdown night, though, for Southern Illinois. Well, Sylvester Wills has been fantastic, and we're going to take a look at that flush that he had set in the screen along the baseline for Brooks. See how far out he is? About 15 feet out and then just explodes to the basket. They call him the garbage man, but man, he is taking out the trash tonight. He is driving a garbage truck out on the floor again here. And gives us a little bit of look. He just gave us a look. Gave us a look, Slack like, man. He said, boys, I got it going tonight. I hope you're hyping me up. Sly, you are the super Sly now. 3.50 left to go in the game. Nine-point lead for Southern Illinois with the ball. 
Southern will be patient, try to run 20 seconds off the shot clock every time down. Williams has been good. Working off those screens, 10 to shoot for Brooks. Williams. Willis. No, air ball. Thierman barely hits rim. Or it would have been a shot clock violation. Creighton's going to have to get some quick hitters to get back in this ball game. McKinney sets up Corver. Got it. Corver's got 10. I'm telling you, if he gets his feet set, it's over. It is over. That's his first open look of the game. Corver's in double figures and has a double double. Creighton's like Rocky Balboa. Their face is all bloodied up. They're still standing. And they're coming back against Apollo Creed. It's amazing. Look at him running at Kent Williams coming off that screen. Derriman gets fouled going to the basket. Lindemann had no choice. I'm just Corver's had the last five Creighton points. I'm just amazed at the floor game. Kent Williams, look at that great find to Jermaine Deerman. This is one of the best games I've ever seen Kent Williams play all around game. He's doing it on the defensive end. He's finding his teammates, and he's knocking down shots when he gets the opportunity. Williams, 22 points, 8 of 12 from the field, 4 assists. Deerman missing the front end of a two-shot opportunity. He's one of three at the line for the game. Deerman, 15 points, 7 boards. 16 points for Deerman. It's a three possession lead at 2.39 left in the game. Corver, Bowden in jail. So he gets out of jail. <laughs> Just got released from jail. Everybody ran away from him. He said, I guess I can knock down a three footer. Dana Altman imploring his troops to turn up the defensive intensity. Still plenty of time. 2.15 left. Williams in the lane. Beerman says uh, punch up some new software here. <laughs> Brooks, no. Creighton down five at 147. There's a tip. It was touched by SIU. Got numbers. Creighton's got numbers. Bowden for three. Got it. D'Anthony Bowden hits a three. He's only 30% from three for the year, and much worse than that over the last month. Well, it didn't look pretty, but Brian Turner runs by the ball. Creighton's got numbers. They knock it down. Cut it to two. Rocky's still up. Punching away. team has taken some right crosses and uppercuts 62 60 and DeAnthony Bowden who has not shot it good from the perimeter nails a three to get him within two well you see there Turner runs by the ball Creighton's got numbers five on four they find Bowden the least likely candidate to knock in the three and he knocks it in and see Turner going for the ball and that puts his team in a bad position because they can't match up with everybody and Mr. Bowden knocks it in the chess match continues. After the three, Creighton called timeout. Then after their timeout was completed, Southern Illinois called timeout. <laughs> These two teams will play Monday again. Scotty, you're headed to Redbird Arena. Southern Illinois will take on Tom Richards and Illinois State Redbirds at 6 Central. I'll be in Omaha, the final game in the history of Civic Auditorium as Creighton will entertain Wichita State, an upset winner over Southwest Missouri State. Wichita State is assured the three seed in Arch Madness. Southwest Missouri State will be the four seed. The winner tonight will be the one seed. The loser, obviously, the two seed. One possession game, 96 seconds left. Well, here comes the pressure by Creighton. Southern's handling it all night long. Southern breaks it. Thierman waits for help. What a game. This is not disappointed. This has lived up to its billing, and it's hard to do. Corn out there, a good free throw shooter. Ten to shoot. 70 seconds in the game. Two-point lead, SIU. Dearman. Got it. 
What great patience by Southern. Nice job by Darren Brooks. I thought he waited a little bit too long, but found the big seniors having the big night. 8 of 12 is Dearman. 18 points. Creighton down four. The Anthony Bad Grimes inside with 18 to shoot steal by Corn. Grimes got double teen and now Creighton has to foul. Lindemann bumps into Williams. And they're calling an attention. You see the look on Kent Williams' face. He is going to get one and one here. They are in the first bonus. Or did they call it they intentional? They called an intentional they foul. They call this it. intentional. Dana Altman is talking with Paul Jansen. So a late call to call it intentional. Well, watch Lindemann coming over. I don't think he came over with malicious intent. Just got a little bit out of control and knocked Williams right into the boards and was a little bit of a late call. Crowd really reacted. He was just kind of going for the ball. He knew he had to foul. What a big play. Huge. Now you're going to get the free throws and possession. Michael Lindemann called for the foul. Williams, 24 points. It is the 35th time in his brilliant Southern Illinois Saluki career that he has had 20 points or better. And now the Salukis have possession. Up 66-60 with 37 seconds left to go. Well, and guess who I'm trying to get the ball to if I'm Southern Illinois? Mr. 33 better come back and catch it. He's trying. Grimes denies it. Brooks finds Corn. Horn gets fouled, and he's no bargain at the line. He's hit 11 in a row this season. He's 85% at the line this year. Well, that's why you have him in the ball game. He's one of the better shooting big men in the Valley. At the line, Corn, one and one. Corn, 12 free throws in a row. We got a small lineup in with Turner, Brooks, and Williams. Stetson Harrison not in the ball game. Turner does a much better job defensively out on the perimeter. Two free throws, eight point lead at a half minute. Three short, rebound Turner. And Southern Illinois is on their way to being the one seed in the Valley postseason tournament and picking up their second at least a share of the Valley Championship for the second year in a row Bruce Weber's team backed up a sweet 16 run with a great year this year and they've had so many close calls we talked about Creighton coming back they were down three points at under 30 seconds at Southwest Missouri State and came back to win well, it's amazing the poise that they've shown, but when you got a player like Kent Williams, Williams knocked down the big shot against SMS to win that game in the Hammond Center. Corver stripped on the three by Turner, fouled immediately by Kyle Corver, and 18 seconds left to go. And let's go to the Rawlings play of the game. A stare down between the top two players in the league. Well, a little bit of a broken play. Kent Williams just faces him up, and you won't see two better players in the Missouri Valley Conference than those two, and Kent Williams getting the better of that matchup here tonight. 24 points tonight for Kent Williams, the senior from Mount Vernon, Illinois, playing his final game at home. Turner has hit 11 free throws in a row. The Salukis have waited for this game for a month. What a night for Southern Illinois. And Kent Williams finally breaks out a smile up 10 with 18 seconds left to go in the game. Creighton banks it in. Timeout, Dana Altman. Dana Altman's team, 25 and 3. More wins than any team in the nation. 25 wins. Well, when you talk about the NCAA tournament, there's no doubt in my mind they're in either way. You have an RPI of 31. You know, the criteria the NCAA says that they look at 
are, number one, you have to have quality non-conference wins. They've got that. They beat Notre Dame, BYU, Nebraska, Fresno State. You've got to win your conference or be right there. They're certainly doing that. And you've got to finish strong. They're 9-1 in their last 10 ball games. I don't see win or lose here tonight how they don't get in the NCAA tournament. Southern, on the other hand, they've got a 48 RPI. They'll be in the mid to low 40s after this win with their win last week against Wisconsin-Milwaukee, who may win the Horizon League. And this win here tonight, they may be back in the NCAA picture. I think bracket buster Saturday, what happened in this league and with these two teams and with Southern winning tonight, getting a top 25 win. Creighton has spent most of the year in that top 20. I think it gets them both in. Unless someone just completely falters from here on out. But these are the best two teams in this league. And with 21 wins by Southern Illinois, an RPI that will climb after this win, could put them in the lower 30s. I think you put the Egyptian dogs in the history of last year's Sweet 16 run. Absolutely. They still need to have a strong showing in St. Louis and take care of business on Monday night, but they're doing everything that the NCAA committee asked you to do to get in the tournament. 70 to 62. Corn trying to get it in. Does with 10 seconds left to go in the game. And this crowd has been rabid, and they're going to get a victory for the Southern Illinois Salukis. For Bruce Weber, it's his 100th win in Carbondale. What a win for Bruce Weber and the Salukis. Oh, they were fantastic here tonight. Really took it to Creighton, give Creighton credit. They came back and played with a lot of energy, but Southern's intensity, especially on the defensive end, on Kyle Corver and Kent Williams, was unreal here tonight. Listen to me go down the line of the resume. 100 wins for Weber. 15th Valley win. It's an all-time high. Tomorrow, the women get after it. Wichita State at SMS. It's the biggest win that SIU has had over a team ranked this high since 1988. Their 27th win in a row at home. Victory for Southern Illinois over a great for Scott Highmark. I'm Mitch Holtis. Enjoy the rest of your Valley weekend. A huge night for the Salukis and Saluki fans. It was. It was quite an atmosphere at the arena, and the fans did not go away disappointed. When schedules come out before the season, there are always certain dates that stand out. March 1st is a prime example. The Creighton Blue Jays coming to the arena on senior night for two pillars of the program, Kent Williams and Jermaine Dearman. Now factoring Creighton's national ranking and that both teams come in tied for the Missouri Valley lead, you have a bonanza even the schedule makers couldn't have dreamed of. We head to the sold-out and raucous arena where the seniors took center stage this evening. But early on, it was the Blue Jays who threatened to steal all the thunder. Larry House buries the three, and Creighton had a quick 7-0 lead. But those seniors stepped up. Jermaine Dearman with the jumper here in Southern had a 12-11 lead. More Salukis, more from the seniors. This time, it's Williams who will knock down the three Southern led 32-23 at the break. And did I mention that the arena was raucous? Second half, Creighton made a run. It's Michael Lindemann inside for the layup, and the Blue Jays were within one. But Darren Brooks, huge all night for his defense on Kyle Korver. He'll come up with the steal and put home the dunk. Southern's lead was back to four. More from the Salukis. This time, it's Sylvester Willis. The follow, two-handed jam. The dogs were up eight. Moments later, it's Kent Williams sizing up Corver, and he is just saying, in your eye, Kyle Corver, with the three. The dogs held on to take over first place in the Valley. Your final, 70 to 62. Southern is assured of at least a tie and has clinched the top seed in the upcoming Valley Tournament. We go now to the arena, live, Barry Hyatt. What do you have for us? What a tremendous effort tonight. Darren, this was easily one of the Saluki's most inspired games of the season. Joining me now, Sylvester Willis, the junior, uh, the junior for the, the uh, Saluki's. And Sylvester, I know you have to be so excited about what transpired here tonight. Uh, talk about just the importance of this win. Well, you know, this is good for us to clinch at least a share of the conference title. So, I mean, for the second year in a row, you know, those things don't come by every day. So, I mean, that's just good for us, and we're going to cherish this moment. Now in the second half, you guys had a nine-point lead late. Creighton cuts it all the way down to two. What were you thinking at that point? I mean, I was scared, you know. I mean, their team of runs, and, you know, they can – Corbett, you know, he's such a good player. They can easily put three, four points on the board. So, you know, I was just, you know, kind of scared. But, you know, we were, uh, we were able to get a big stop. Then, then, you know, it was a game of free throws after that, so. And obviously with this win, you guys at least – 
clinch a share of the Missouri Valley Conference regular season title, but now you have to go to Illinois State on Monday night, and that's not going to be easy, is it? No, they're playing better. I mean, they uh, they also won their bracket buster game, and, you know, they started off bad, and their coach, you know, uh, was really getting on them, and now they're really playing hard, so it's not going to be an easy road game for us. Well, best of luck, and thanks for joining us tonight, okay? All right, thanks. Once again, the Salukis win it tonight 70-62. to They're now 15-2 and in the Missouri Valley Conference, and as I said, at least a share of the regular season title. Darren, we'll send it back to you now. Thank you, Barry. Heartland Sports, only on KFES 12. You're looking live at the scoreboard here in Carverdale at SIU Arena, a much more calm SIU Arena. Just minutes ago, the Salukis pulled off an unbelievable upset of number 17, creating their arch enemies of the Missouri Valley Conference. Last time the dogs knocked off a number 17 team, a long time ago, 1988, they defeated Villanova, winning that game 102 to 81. Let's not spare any more time. Let's go straight to the highlights, check out some of the action from this one. It was intense, just that's at 6.30. The doors open up in the arena took just minutes to fill. Every seat in the house jam-packed. This was the scene minutes before tip-off. The seniors honored their final game at SIU Arena. Jermaine Dearman a standing ovation and a huge roar for local boy Ken Williams and senior David Carney. Now the Saluki faithful, yeah, they even uh, let Creighton star Kyle Culver know how they felt. Some things we just can't say on TV. And it didn't take Creighton long to let everyone know how they felt. Larry House. Hits the jumper, two of his first half, seven points. Next time down the court, Brady Darren works for the turnaround over Dearman. The one-hander, he got it. Then the offense just continuing to roll for Creighton. Kyle Culver, the cross-court pass, and Muddy from three. That was Larry House. Dogs down seven at that point. They finally score. The Salukis do three minutes into the half. That's uh, Darren Brooks on the miss. And Sylvester Willis comes in to clean up the offensive glass, picking up two. Next to go attending. And then the, here we go. The Salukis wake up. The steal. Jermaine Dearman ahead for the scoop. Brian Turner, he wants in on the action. Bombs away for that one. He hits three points. And the Salukis are down just one. Dana Altman feeling a, a little nervous at that point. But uh, not Jermaine Dearman. No, this guy was on fire the entire night. And uh, don't turn away. It's Dearman again this time just inside the three-point line. He had 18 points of the game. It's 11 of those coming in the first half. The place responds with a standing ovation. Tough first half for Kyle Cole with a long three. It's nothing but air. That was his second one of the game. He finished with two points in the first half. And on the transition, the dogs ignite the crowd. It's Dearman. Yeah, it's another jumper. He hits it. The kid Williams, the guy was on fire. This one right in front of him. He hits the three. He finishes the game with 24 points. Check the score. Look at this. Salukis win it 70 to 62. They have now won 27 straight games at home. And uh, they are now 26 and three overall, 15 to two in the Missouri Valley Conference. And here's a very interesting statistic. It's gonna make you feel good if you're an SIU fan. Since 1994, every team that's won at least a share of the Missouri Valley Conference crowd has advanced to the NCAA tournament either by an automatic bid or an at-large.